Hey guys, welcome back to Now I Know. In last video, we were talking about histone modification. How histone acetylation help in decondensation of DNA so that it can be transcribed. Gene expression can take place. In one of the previous videos, we have already spoken about X chromosome inactivation, where one chromosome, one active X chromosome in female would undergo inactivation, so it is transcriptionally uh, inactive. Also, we have spoken about uh, chromosome condensation. That is how a chromatin is condensed to form chromosome. The in a packaging we have spoken about now keeping all these things in background i think now we are ready to understand two terms uh, that is heterochromatin and euchromatin so as you can see the term itself says it's chromatin we are talking about form of chromatin these are two different forms of chromatin and chromatin if you remember in DNA packaging, we saw chromatin is nothing but DNA that is wrapped around histone proteins, right? As the chromatin will undergo condensation, it forms the chromosome. So chromatin is DNA wrapped around histone proteins. So what we are talking about here is heterochromatin and euchromatin. This is nothing but two different levels of condensation of chromatin. In simple way, if I want to say what is heterochromatin and euchromatin, it is just the different level of condensation of chromatin. That means, uh, if you remember, we were talking about in DNA packaging that the chromatin is condensed to form chromosome during the cell division process, right? So, suppose once the cell division has occurred, okay, say for example, we are talking about mitosis. After mitosis has occurred, the, chrom the chromosomes are separated and it is now in the uh, daughter cell. What happens to this chromosome now? It will go back to its less condensed form that is chromatin. Right? In interphase, you will absorb chromatin. So once the cell division has occurred, this highly condensed form of chromatin or chromosome would return back to less condensed form of chromatin. Now here, when uh, this thing is happening, when it is returning back to its uh, chromatin stage are two possibilities that could occur one it can return back to its you know kind of loose form or kind of the interface form that we see under the microscope in the center of the nucleus something like this or that form is the euchromatin form and approximately around 10 percent of the chromosome would remain in highly condensed form okay you will not see this kind of a structure what you will see is highly condensed form of chromatin that is called heterochromatin so when we observe the interface uh, stage of a cell the nucleus under the microscope what we observe is something like this right this is the nucleus okay this is not the cell this is the nucleus of a cell that i have shown here as you can see near the nuclear envelope you will see dense darkly stained chromatin highly condensed form of chromatin that is the heterochromatin that is highly condensed that means what it is transcriptionally inactive and in the center you can see this lightly stained thin uh, strands kind of a structure that is our euchromatin that is the active form of chromatin now the reason that uh, heterochromatin is darkly stained because it is highly condensed right so it takes up a lot of stain that is obvious to understand euchromatin compared to that is not that condensed so it is lightly stained now why is that heterochromatin is located near the nuclear envelope whereas the euchromatin is in the center of a uh, nucleus we had discussed about this in uh, x chromosome inactivation video where i had told you that bar body if you have noticed it is always near the nuclear envelope the reason is the uh, periphery region or the area around or near the nuclear envelope is transcriptionally inactive region okay but the center region of nucleus is where the transcription occurs so uh, that is why heterochromatin is transcriptionally inactive uh, chromatin so this is going to be in the periphery where the transcription levels are very very low whereas euchromatin is active form and transcription activities are high in the center of the nucleus so you will observe euchromatin somewhere in the center part so that's that's all about it now let us look at the term you know euchromatin and heterochromatin let us understand it little bit uh, more the meaning of word eu in greek is well and hetero we know hetero meaning different so what uh, how you can remember this is euchromatin well means you know remember it this way that euchromatin is 
transcriptionally active chromatin which is available for transcription and gene expression so that means all the genes that needs to be expressed would be present in euchromatin region very well logically easy to understand whereas heterochromatin different means there are again two different types of heterochromatin two different forms are existing under heterochromatin let's look at that now so heterochromatin are of two type one is constitutive heterochromatin and the other one is facultative heterochromatin from the term itself we can understand constitutive is always in heterochromatin phase whereas facultative means it can revert back to uh, you know it can also exist in the active euchromatin stage so constitutive heterochromatin is the chromatin that remains always condensed in all the cells at all the times it is permanently transcriptionally inactive form of chromatin permanently inactive dna that means it represents the dna that is permanently silenced this uh, itself shows again uh, if you want to understand if we talk about genes in heterochromatin it is not going to be gene rich there are going to be maybe very few genes that are present in heterochromatin because it is not going to get transcribed so constitutive heterochromatin is always condensed in all the cells at all the times therefore obviously we can say that it represents the dna that is permanently silenced constitutive heterochromatin has a lot of repeated sequence and it contains very low gene now where is this uh, constitutive heterochromatin as concentrated in the chromosome it is uh, concentrated in specific region and we know these uh, region very well it is centromere and telomere so the uh, centromere and telomere region of chromosome is where we will find the constitutive heterochromatin what you can see here in uh, light color or less condensed form is our euchromatin so this is our heterochromatin and the light shown uh, portion here is euchromatin so uh, that's all about constitutive heterochromatin constitutive always silence permanently silence transcriptionally inactive what about uh, facultative heterochromatin uh, facultative heterochromatin as the term says it can revert back to its active euchromatin phase right and this kind of chromatin is specifically inactivated now here when i say specifically inactivated uh, now it should be easy for us to understand because we have already spoken about x chromosome inactivation where one of the x chromosome in female is specifically inactivated for dosage compensation right so x chromosome inactivation of formation of bar body is an example of facultative heterochromatin right it is transcriptionally inactive the x chromosome which gets inactivated transcriptionally inactive but what happens uh, to this inactive uh, x chromosome when the cell has to undergo meiosis when the oogenesis is occurring this inactivated x chromosome needs to go back to its active stage right it needs to go back to its euchromatin stage otherwise what will happen the newly formed daughter cells half of them would have inactivated x chromosome right which is not feasible so during oogenesis these inactive x chromosomes go back to its active form that is why x chromosome inactivation or the bar body is an example of facultative heterochromatin now this point also should be easy to understand because we have already spoken about it this uh, how this uh, condensation takes place how this silencing takes place it is because of histone deacetylation that means the uh, positive charge of histone is regained back and this would have a very good tight binding with the dna because dna is negatively charged so you will have compact form of heterochromatin also in case of x chromosome inactivation we had seen the mechanism how is it silenced it was by the formation of cyst cyst is nothing but it's an rna that goes and binds to chromosome right that is nothing but rna interference that is how the facultative heterochromatin is maintained example as i just said bar body or inactivated x chromosome so that's all heterochromatin as the term itself says hetero means different that means the two different forms of heterochromatin constitutive and facultative constitutive means always uh, condensed that means it is permanently silenced it has lot of repetitive sequence and because of that 
it is not available for transcription obviously it has very low genes example centromere and telomere facultative term suggests it can go back to active euchromatin phase best example is the bar body because uh, before oogenesis the inactivated x chromosome needs to be active otherwise half of the daughter cells would would receive inactivated chromosome versus that euchromatin as we just spoke about is the normal form of chromatin which is available for transcription and it is gene rich so that's all about heterochromatin and euchromatin once you have understood the meaning i think it's super easy to understand it's very very interesting so that's all for now i hope this video was helpful do subscribe to the channel for new video every week and i'll see you next time until then keep learning